Hey, this is Oteal. If you're liking what you're hearing, head on over to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get your bus pass for an extra episode every week. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Comes a Time. That's Oteal. That's Mike. And we were joined by Annabelle Garcia. Unbelievable chat. Wow. <laughs> what an unbelievable chat. Yeah, the, what, whatever your, uh, your childhood was, was probably not like that. <laughs> and it's funny because For you better. have to like, you know, it just it, it brings up the whole thing of like, what's normal? Like that was her normal. Right. And we all have a sense of whatever's normal is still something not normal about it. But this they, was not, yeah, this was like yeah, this way was, not normal. <laughs> there, she said so, so interesting too that like, cause you know, so we'll talk sometimes to people like you're in the park, you're in the, at a, at a venue and someone next to you is pregnant and you're like, oh, it's the baby's first show or whatever. When, when she was backstage, she, she was around the craziest of the best of the freaks of, you know, and they were all <laughs> whispering into, you know. <laughs> through the placenta into her ears. <laughs> Pretty wild stuff. She's incredible. Now, every now and then, you know, like we are doing these digitally and we're doing these, ver- you know, people's connection may be choppy. So apologies to listeners if you do hear a little bit of, you know, uh, glitchy stuff. We'll do our best to to clean it out. But some of it's probably just going to be there. But um, we'll definitely have her back on. But I know some people had said even like in comments, like if it's going to be glitchy or if it's bad connection, let us know. This is me letting you know. There yeah. was a little bit of stuff. <laughs> there was a little bit of a problem at times there. But Well, she lives out in the boonies, you know. I know, and, yeah. Uh, so she she did try I think three or four different devices, and uh, we were lucky to get video at all if it frees up sometime. But you know, it's such a like the a, a lot of the podcasts and a lot of our podcasts are, are about authentic connection. You know, so we may not have had a good like you know bandwidth <laughs> connection, but man the. The real connection, just human. She's really a really a cool lady. Oh my god, yeah. And uh, this is an s- extremely interesting topic, you know. Just like being being the child of of a someone that massive, that was a deity to people. Like that's hard. That's I mean, or even just the whole Grateful Dead scene itself. Like it's such a behemoth. Yeah. yeah, it's such a gargantuan thing to compete with for your dad's attention and just to negotiate the craziness of it, which there's no there's no way anybody could teach you about it because they just grow up and just happen. Like, I don't know one really huge band that wasn't utterly bewildered by the success, right? the hugeness of it. Just nobody can predict that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, how could, how would Elvis ever know that, you know, he was like born this really poor, you know, in Mississippi. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like the biggest thing on earth. Like, you don't have a chance, man. You know, know, there's no there's no class in college or high school or elementary school or anything for that. I think that it was Barlow who said, and I may have already quoted this on the podcast, but I think he said to Jerry, like, I don't know if Bobby's cut out for show business and Jerry goes, no one is, Yeah, you know? And it was just oh, that yeah. type of a, like, but to be the child of it and to be born into it. And also, and it's only a topic we breezed over and we need to have her back on to talk. Like she mentioned her dad was sick a lot, yeah. you know, like, think about it. She was 16 and he went into a diabetic coma. Yeah. Like, that's heavy as a kid. You know? Absolutely. It's 16 that we were talking about, like being a teenager is so hard to begin with. How yeah. the hell you deal with it in that, you know, in the center of that storm, you know, like, so it's a, it's a really, really fascinating conversation. And I just absolutely adore the fact that somehow she is very comfortable inside her own brain. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? To have gone through that level of nuttiness, which you can't possibly imagine you just no regular person can imagine 
And she landed like she's winning. That's really beautiful. That's yeah. really beautiful. And I'm oh, she's unbelievable. grateful for it and happy for it. And uh, yeah. really glad that she came on and and opened up because she's not. She said, you know, I would. I don't. I don't think it would be her natural inclination to just talk about all her personal stuff, you know, to the entire world. But it was really beautiful that she did with us. So I, thank you, Annabelle. Yeah, absolutely. And. Um you know, it's interesting because this week is if you if you'll notice, O'Teal, I'm wearing a uh, Garcia yeah. handpicked T-shirt, and uh, this week starts our sponsorship with uh, Garcia handpicked cannabis. And uh, let me tell you, when it comes to the detail to craftsmanship and the packaging, and I mean the product itself is just beyond, you know. It's a product beyond description. What you would expect. (laughs) What you would expect. And, you know, everything that they've put in, the detail to the packaging, the, the, the merch, the... Um, the jars, the packaging for the pre-rolls, the gummies that are shaped like guitar picks that are called Jerry's Picks. I mean, it's all <laughs> really dynamite stuff. And we're so proud to uh, be partnering with Garcia Handpicked Cannabis um, as they grow throughout the uh, the country, as the country is beginning to, uh, you know, unbutton a couple buttons up top there. So uh, thank God. Thank God is right. So um <sighs> We are so happy to be, you know, partnering with Trixie and the Garcia family. And um, there's so many incredible uh, products to choose from, depending on where you are in the country. Yes, I can't wait for a tour. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be getting to partake in all of it. <laughs> so you can check out all of their products at GarciaHandpicked.com and connect with fellow fans and go at Garcia Handpicked. That's at Garcia Handpicked on social media. As always, folks, we are here on the Osiris Network, uh, home to so many of our fr- brother and sister podcasts. Check out all of them at OsirisPod.com. And don't forget, folks, there's a bus with a seat ready for your butt over on Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash comes a time pod, you can join us for uh, a bonus episode each week, a whole bunch of great wormholes and, uh, you know, uploads and different things that you could check out. So head over to Patreon and join us. Thank you again to Annabelle. Thank you all for listening. And uh, we'll see you on the road. It's coming soon, huh? Coming soon. Bye-bye. I'm ready. Tie your shoes, kids. It's going to be a fun summer. Peace and love, y'all. So it's it's so funny, like of uh, many of the people that we have on the podcast, the first time I see their face again is on the podcast, and <laughs> not like at a show. So it's great to see your face. It's nice to see you too, Teal. I miss you terribly. Uh, I know uh, things are starting to get back. The bus is getting uh, ready to get back on the road, though. So that's good. That's a good sign. Yeah. 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 I mean, the the wheels are in motion. You know, the great machine is coming back to life as (laughs) far as the entertainment world goes. (laughs) The great beast starts to. (laughs) Yes. Is being awoken. So how yeah, was the quarantine for you? Has it been a uh, good, bad, both, up, down? Well, for me, it was actually pretty great. I I really liked not feeling like I had to do anything. You know, the pressure of uh, going to shows and and kind of like getting hugged all the time and kind of putting that that part of yourself out there. It was really nice to just be peaceful and not think about it for a while. I mean, there was, of course, terrible anxiety, fear, dread, and existential, you know, just (laughs) despair (laughs) at the same time. But that's every day, right? It was great. That's (laughs) life on this planet. (laughs) You know, yes. Particularly last year, you know, we had like the, the, the ultimate pressure cooker for everybody you know it was just so many things going on that were so negative it was really tough i was really happy to stay home and kick everybody out you know it's like Mm -hmm. no you can't i'm not going anywhere (laughs) 
<laughs> Leave me alone. That's funny. The pressure, like you, you have the pressure to hug everybody when you're at shows. I didn't think about that. You know, like I've, I, I've been around you at shows a couple times and, and it's, uh, you, yeah, everyone wants to hug you and your sister and it's oh, just wild, man. Like you're just a, like a, a hug, like, like you j- like a fly, like a fly will find a, a bright light. <laughs> like you're the bright light and all the moths are <laughs> coming to hug you, you know? It's true. I mean, that's my, that's our job. You know, we're there to receive love from really nice people who really loved Jerry and everything he did and, uh, and, the, and their world. So it's like, it's, it's, it's just the thing you have, I have, how could I not hug them? You know, it's like, I owe them everything. So it's, but it is exhausting. <laughs> and, uh, and during a pandemic, it's literally the worst job you can have. <laughs> <laughs> His hugger. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. I've you often and- thought about that. Like there's some people that I've met, like, uh, Willie Nelson or BB King that are just so nice to fans period like you i'm sure you there's not one story about either of them being a dick to a fan you know whereas i have like sometimes i'm just not in the mood and who am i you know and, and after meeting them i was like wow they're just like so truly humble but i think you also have to be wired that way too or maybe their life experience or something because i still have those moments i choose to take myself out of it so that I'm not even putting myself in the position of not being as nice as I could be. You know, but it's like, look, if you walk out the door, take the picture, hu- do the handshake, hug, whatever, like, just do it. You know, but it's hard. It is hard. It, it's a job that never, ever goes away. It's like it's a it's a 24 hour, seven days a week. You're only protected area is in your home you know or on your property and so it becomes it becomes tricky in that way it becomes a challenge uh to kind of accept that responsibility but at the same time you know i don't know detach without detaching i mean it's very difficult honestly and you're you're in a unique position where like i heard it was a really interesting kind of profound statement you said in an, in an interview that was like a lot of the fans know more about my family than I even know about my family. <laughs> and that's an that's interesting weird. place it's to true. be. Yeah. Where yeah. <laughs> you're like, is, is there it's, anything you could tell me about? Me? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, and surprisingly enough, the answer is yes. A lot of people do tell me stuff about myself that I don't remember or, you know, or, <laughs> uh, you know, or would rather not remember obviously, but, um, <laughs> but you know the the whole scene is such a huge juggernaut and it, it's the center of so many people's lives for so many years now that it's there's no escape and so um you know you're you know as a, as the kid you know the the uh, the the love and the attention is not for me i didn't do anything you know i just happened to come along and uh so you kind of have to respect that too it's like a river that it's it's not your river you're just a boat you know, but everybody's throwing stuff at you, you know, or, or I don't know. It's hard to, there's like a million different <laughs> metaphors I could come up with. It's, it's, it's challenging, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, I've heard more stories of, you know, more stories about myself than I care to admit that I, I swear are not true, but people s- tell me, yes, you were there <laughs> with Bob Dylan at the movie theater with your dad. And I'm like, I, don't remember that but <laughs> if you say it's true then okay <laughs> you know? so, and i wish i did remember it because that sounds awesome <laughs> <laughs> totally so i'm like wow that's i feel like i'd remember that right yeah I had, right i had a moment like that <laughs> no what then if you hear the if you hear another person confirm it then you're like oh wow that was true apparently yeah Hmm. Well, the right. good thing about this community right. yeah, you is need that a third party. <laughs> yeah, the good thing about this scene is who knows what anyone, everyone's memory is just a bit foggy and a bit creative, non-fictitious. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's interesting. Everything, you know, no, no two people see the same thing the same, especially at the, at, at our shows. You know, well, I'm you always know, f- I'm sorry, question about no, it. No. I just wanted to ask you um, since I know. 
and I, I really didn't want this podcast to go the same way too. I know it's just all Jerry, 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 Jerry. Oh, yeah, you know, no, no, no. Uh, Let's. I want to get into some of the stuff that you're into. Like I know one of the things because I I follow you and I and I I know that you're an artist and I love your stuff. It's funny because I when I first got the gig, um, I told my wife I was like I really like her stuff. Like it really speaks to me. Like it's it's not because she's Jerry's daughter. I felt like I kept saying that it's not because she's Jerry's <laughs> daughter. You know, like. I don't know. Maybe maybe we have a similar way of looking at things or something. I don't know. But your artwork, I really love it. I really do. Thank you. That that means a lot, and it's it's okay. I mean, it makes me feel great when you say it's not because of Jerry's, you know, because of the Jerry influence. Yeah. But that's something you struggle with as an artist, no matter what. You know, it's like people like me, do people not, you know, but I, I think that, uh, since, I mean, whenever you and I first met, it was an immediate, uh, you know, uh, click. So I really enjoyed your company. I felt like we had the same vibe and my work is very much about exploring the weirdnesses and, but the, in a whimsical way and kind of simplicity and, one person's direct connection to everything in the world and uh, in kind of a Seussian, yeah. Mel Brooksian kind <laughs> of way, you know? I mean, that's I just, a, I love humor. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice blend right there, Seuss and Mel Brooks. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two of my heroes. Yeah, two yeah. heroes. Two, of, two, of, two treasures, both of them. Throw See, a little that's why w- in there, too. So, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Our crumb. Oh, I love Crumb, but I, I, Mel Brooks is such a huge thing. Me too. Like, yeah, we you nerded know. out on that right away when O'Teal and I first became friends. It was a big Mel Brooks yeah. nerd out. I watched High Anxiety well, actually, for like the first time as... in a long time the other day, and man, so good. Oh, that movie's it's a diamond. That movie's a diamond. It's one. It's so awkward. You feel so awkward watching that movie, and you don't really know what to do with your with your hands. You know, it's it's funny, but it's not funny. You know, yeah, you're like just a, standing up in your living room. That one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Otil and I uh, definitely we bonded over Mel Brooks too. As anyone who loves Mel Brooks is an instant kindred spirit for me. It's just. I yeah. mean, you know, uh, Blazing Saddles was is a life changing movie for That's me. I, sure, every bit of it, and um, yeah. and Young Frankenstein was just enormous in my life. It still is to this day. You know, I just uh, I could not. I, you know, well, anything so Gene Wilder good. does. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's the most amazing creature ever. I so really wish is. that I could have met him. The fact that him and Gilda Radner oh. were married, it's just I know. I was yeah. just like, oh, that's it right there. Yeah. Those I, dinners I, were probably so hilarious at the silent moments, oh you know? Oh, God. You know, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it amazing, yes. too, that some of these people that group together and stick together, like the Eugene Levy, like, you know, that, like, Christopher Guest pack, like, Best in Show and Waiting for Guffman and all, the, and the yeah. Mel Brooks, Gene Wilder, Terry Gar, that pack. Like, it's really neat when a group of actors jive like a group of musicians and they almost create a band and each movie is like an album in a way you know it's kind of neat when that all works yeah i totally dig it no i mean monty python and uh yeah. just the troops and the and second second city and uh you know stephen colbert comes from that world too i mean and john stewart and so i mean it's lesser now we don't really have the troop thing like we used to yeah. but that I, I found that to be a really reassuring kind of theme throughout life. It's like, okay, I'm going to see Eugene Levy, Christopher Guest, Michael McKeon, and, you know, yeah. all these various players in this. And, and yeah, like, like a rock band, you know, like a band. And a they band. have their own identity within that, that reality. And they're hilarious. And they, they elevate each other. It's the magic the same magic that's in music, you know, where it's like yeah. it's, some people just click and they make it, yeah. take it to a place they could never get to alone. You know, I mean, absolutely. I mean, John Candy, I mean, uh, you know, he was just amazing. <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah, can't even, he's the best. <laughs> it's, it must be so, it's so much harder for like a visual artist because it's so much more solitary like a, it's it doesn't seem to be like a band thing, you know. 
yeah, you you sometimes get an opportunity to work with people, but I mean, being an artist in general, you're uh, you know you're sort of persnickety, you know, <laughs> and, and crotchety about things, and <laughs> and you're very choosy, and and uh, you know, I haven't met too many people that I I would like to work with, um, but it's one of those things too, where I have the I have like a a uh, a boundary of Garcia around me so it's like lots of people want me to work with them on things yeah. but it's only under that flag and it, that's like yeah. really awkward for me I don't want to be the if anything I want to be the lady pulling the rope or digging a hole then I do want to be like the leader of a group and I feel like hmm. the Garcia manifesto is already the, the passive leadership <laughs> you know and I, <laughs> yeah. honestly that's all even too much for <laughs> that's too much for me you know I, I can't handle that either my dad was a master <laughs> <laughs> that's too much when when do you think you started to like like really commit to it or or be more serious about, or was there ever that was it just always a part well it's, it's always been a part it's uh it's was a comp a competitive it started off competitive because my sister my older sister, Sunshine, and my mom are just amazing artists. They mm-hmm. they can draw and paint with like a, a, a real, I don't know, like that classical flow, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, you know how you are envious of the guy that does it better than you in a different way? <laughs> and you just feel like, I'll never be that good. I'll yeah. never be that good. And then it just drives you to specialize in your own specific area and then it takes like 30 years before you finally say (laughs) i'll never be that good but i'm different you know i've got my own voice and so (laughs) that that was a it was a competition it's like a childhood competition and then over the years i got into comic books and uh, my dad really got me into the right comic books and kind of showed me the line drawing world where it's very oh, simplistic neat. and like the art crumb and that kind of thing and old animation he was a huge uh, old animation guy so he'd like have us watch fantasia over and over and over again like i can't tell you how many times we watch fantasia yes <laughs> and i wow. just was enchanted by the by the movement yeah so mm. it's it's that too i wanted to make my i wanted to you know make my dad happy too it's just like here's something we're doing together and and then it it just became an easy thing to be a solitary person drawing in a sketchbook and that was one way to keep the hugs off me when I was like 16 (laughs) you know and I was (laughs) like I'm drawing leave me alone yeah that sharp pencil (laughs) stay away what's funny when you right exactly you talk about that solitary competitiveness too, like doing stand up. It's always that for me. Like I'll be like, and I, I, I'm so proud to be working with the people that, um, that, um, you know, we do these showcase shows and I'll have jokes. I'm so excited about, and then someone will go up before me and I'm like, I'm a fraud. I stink. This guy's so much yeah. better than me. And how, I never would have thought of that punchline or whatever. And, but then it's like, you have to, you're right. After time, you're like, no, I'm just, the different at it i'm not you know and it, it's it, the competitiveness yeah, right. almost becomes more just with you than with anybody else you know <laughs> how, yes, what was it like yeah. what, how That's, hard was that being like a teenager i think about like i was so awkward as a teenager i just wanted to hide i did hide i did yeah. hide yeah. and you're on this like gargantuan scene in some ways i must have really sucked <laughs> like Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would never try to candy coat it and say it was a magical storybook ride. You know, it was it was horrible. (laughs) You know, it was definitely very. (laughs) It was very difficult because I I am at heart like a poetic nerd heart, you know, so I was always a tender kid. And and uh, and, you know, the, the, the Grateful Dead scene in the era I was growing up in was, of course, just just crazy over the top. And, um, you know, people have the nicest intentions, but they, you know, when you're a 16 year old girl or a 15 year old girl, you're just, you're just a big ball of anxiety and awkward feeling. I was always really tall at a very young age and, and kind of slumpy like my dad, <laughs> you know, just not, not, uh, 
not on long neck gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I giggle a lot, and I, you know, <laughs> and I got dosed with way too much acid at a very young age. And, uh, That's you know, not so cool. it's, I loved my dad so much. I mean, oh, well, you know, it, it's not cool now in 2021, but back then it was just like an accident. You know, it wasn't like somebody yeah. dosed me. I just accidentally ate or drank the wrong things because, you know, you're just a little kid and running around know, backstage. There's a thing yeah. that's shiny and you, right. And everybody's busy. Nobody's taking care of the kids. So it's like they just shove us in a room and there'd be like, you know, trays of powder and, <laughs> and various candies that were dosed, you know, or. Or, you know, Owsley would always have, like, the big frisbee full of orange barrel sunshine acid and just, like, with mounds, you know, and it looked like Tic Tacs. You know, what oh. are we going to do? You know, a lot of it had sugar in it. And when you're oh. a hippie kid, any sugar in a storm is a good sugar. It's like it's like any sugar you can get your hands on is amazing. Okay, wow. it was laced with acid. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> you know, lesson learned. <laughs> so it took exactly but, you know, one of those uh, times huh, for you to not do that tic-tac. anymore. <laughs> well, I, I'm told that the, oh man, this is one of those stories that I try not to tell except <laughs> to like intimate company because it's, <laughs> it's family. But like when I was growing up, I would, you know, you know how at, at, uh, at Thanksgiving you have family stories that come out, you know, about each other, about your siblings. Like, remember that time, you know, that yeah, you yeah, yeah. fell down and, you know, and did something really embarrassing. We're all going to laugh at you and you're going to feel bad. Yeah. And so my story was always everyone would say, uh, oh, Annabelle, you, you remember that time you ate 200 hits of acid? <laughs> and uh, I'd be like, no. <laughs> and apparently when I was two years old. I, I, there was like a little high, uh, like a little Kool-Aid jug sitting backstage at a concert as uh, so I was only two and it was orange and I drank it and it turned out to have 200 hits of liquid, oh of, you know, so 1972. God. So it was, it was really good. At least it was really <laughs> clean. And, um, <laughs> at least it was good. Hey, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I just but think I mean, about Kavi. Like... <laughs> I'll tell you that's... what. I mean, if it if it happens, if it happens, you just wrap the kid in a blanket and like put him in a dark place and like you know, lots of encouraging sounds. And you'd be surprised um, how nice the world is inside of a of an equipment case on stage at a rock concert because they would just put <laughs> us inside of like the equipment cases. And it's like being in a womb. It's like, it's, you know, you got the muffled Phil's bass, you know, and the roar of the crowd. And, uh, you know, there's just something very calming <laughs> about that oh, bass. Oh, man. So, you know, they, they handle it. I mean, my my oh. childhood is so colorful that it's almost impossible to talk about sometimes. Because when, I, when I think about it, I'm like, that did that couldn't have happened, <laughs> but it did. You know, it did. You're going to see me rolling through the parking lot with like an, a cello case. So in case I toast too hard, yeah. I'm just going to get in it. <laughs> just... You'll be happy. You'll be happy. You did. I totally get it. I do. I do float. Ta- I do float tanks as often as possible. So I like that oh, whole dark, yeah. like, you know, just being in a, in a little like tomb that you chose to be in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Those are the it's best. soft. It's it's warm. It's it's like the womb, you know. And the, and particularly if you add the the base, you know, it it really helps. Honestly, to this day, I get very sleep gigantic, really loud, huge techno show or something. And like next thing I know, I'm like drowsing off in the corner because the bass immediately makes me sleepy. <laughs> <sighs> That's so neat. And it's, uh, that happens to me with uh, airplanes. Like as soon as the engines yes. start, like I I always miss liftoff. Like I'm out. And then when the plane dip, like I may wake up if it's a long flight or whatever. But usually when the plane does that first dip to land. So there's something like Pavlov's dog. Like as the concert starts, yeah. <laughs> Annabelle's like, she's out cold. <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of, absolutely. That's beautiful. 
As someone who can't <laughs> sleep, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. I love that. You should consider bass. Yeah, you should get let's get distant <laughs> muffled bass. Not like not like in your in your ears, but like, you know, in the bed. I always thought the bed should have a bass beat Ooh, inside yeah. of it somehow. Or like a a cat purr or a cat purr, you know, some like not a massage thing, but like you know, just a, a mental tone massage that you can just coordinate, you know. Yeah. yeah. We're all programmed to respond to the heartbeat, you know, on a primitive level. So it's those are powerful sounds. Yeah, well, Mickey Hart always told me about that, of course. That was one of his big things. <laughs> so I'm definitely pro- <laughs> I'm programmed. <laughs> it's great I mean, that it. nature gives us some like uh, these just gifts for our mental health, like a sounds mm-hmm. or whatever. It's just like I, I that's why I can't I don't want to be a city person anymore. I mean, I live in a city, but it's small, but I like to hear insects. I like to hear. Yeah, it's just those gifts from nature to help your mental health. In general, you know, what, you know yeah. it's so it, it's so interesting too about with sleep. Like, for my wife is a nurse practitioner, and she can fall asleep to like Law and Order Special Victims Unit shit that like gives me like nightmares, <laughs> you know. And she could fall right asleep to that. Right. But if I put any like jazz piano on, that's like the only thing in the world that gives her anxiety is like <laughs> piano like jazzy like lounge piano gives her like panic but she can listen to what? like well we found the cavity filled with you know maggots and whatever <laughs> other and she's just out cold and i'm like i don't get you but this is so funny like you're falling asleep to bass at a techno amazing. show <laughs> it's just all wired differently well, I- yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, your your early programming is somehow plays into all this, you know, for totally. for, for the human condition is 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 kind of what you're exposed to. I remember oh never mind. You know, I, if I go down the I remember thing, we'll never get anywhere. <laughs> well, well that's all we're, that's the only place we wanna go with you is wherever you wanna do. bring us. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? <laughs> well I I'd like well, to but ask some you, are worth going oh, go down and some aren't. So I got to self edit. All right, gotcha. go ahead. No, you go ahead. And no, uh, Annabelle, also, we can't ed- edit anything out later. Yeah, this that isn't you want. live, so we can do whatever you want. <laughs> Tell whatever stories. Um, <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> what I wanted to ask was you know, you were, you were born in 1970 and you were a teenager in the 80s. Um, what did you seek out? Like, were you going to check out? I mean, obviously, growing up backstage at a Grateful Dead, you know, in the world of the dead. When did you like? What music did you get into as a kid on your own? And like, what did you kind of like gravitate oh, yeah. towards? And what shows did you go see? And like, what bands did it for you, like personally, that you found on your own? Well, I was a a, a uh, 100% uh, unabashed lover of like top 40 hits back in those <laughs> days, like Corey Hart, Eurythmics, <laughs> Phil nice. Collins, my man, love Phil Collins. I actually took my dad to see a Phil Collins show at one point. <laughs> and oh, you know, yeah? R.E.M., my very first show, yeah, oh yeah, uh, my very first show that I went to that wasn't The Grateful Dead was... Um, I believe Talking Heads on their Stop Making Sense tour. Ooh, they came nice. through Eugene. And at the time, my mom was up here. And they came to visit Ken Kesey, who is my sister's dad. So he's like my uncle. And uh, I actually met David Byrne at the time. I was just a kid, real little kid. Well, you know, teenager. And he had overdosed on something at Kesey's house. And it was definitely <laughs> one of those situations where... I was walking up the stairs and I came around a corner and there was a strange man with big eyes in a fetal ball wedged into a corner away from everybody, you know, with the most terrified eyes I've ever seen. And I'd been seeing tripping people my whole life, so I knew exactly what his deal was. And he looked terrified that some little kid just found him in the dark. And then, you know, I learned later on that that was David Byrne (laughs) having a freak out at Kesey's house, you know. But seeing their show was huge to me personally, you know. Of course, I get the anecdotes, but at the same time, seeing them in their outfits and the cleanliness of the of the show and how it totally was the opposite of the Grateful Dead, it was just kind of a mind-blowing 
thing where I'm just like, what? I didn't know music could be like that. You know, all clean and <laughs> tight and songs and dance moves and everything. It was like a huge revelation. And then after that, I was, I was back in those days, they called it new wave. So I was yeah. a wavo for sure. Back in wave those days. <laughs> yeah. Duran Duran, you know, I know, I know. Joy it Division. dates me horribly, but yeah. Uh, actually, no, that was too esoteric. I yeah. did not get into Joy Division until much later. I was top there. 40. So yeah, like Corey Hart, man, he was the, he was the shit. Uh, Phil Collins, <laughs> REM, all those kinds of things. I know. And, uh, you know, I tried not to share that information with too many people because I would get mocked pretty heavily. <laughs> well, you know what's weird about that <laughs> is that when I was I've I was born in '64, so in '82 I graduated high school, and right after that I hit the road and I was playing in a top forty cover band. So I was playing all those songs, ah. even though it wasn't the music <laughs> oh that God. I was listening to. You know, I was like. <laughs> But it's so funny, all you named, like, I remember my background parts to those songs <laughs> that you, you're naming those artists. Oh my gosh, that's great. So funny. Are you telling man. me you can play sunglasses at night? Because that's uh, magic, man. That's dude, heavy magic. I sunglasses at so night by Corey Hart. I, I rep- can <laughs> <laughs> so good. Well, it's funny because I like I I wasn't a huge fan, although there was some of it that I liked because it was like it was fun to play, and uh, but I know all of it so well. Like I really rem- I'm surprised yeah. how much of it I remember. Like something will come on and I'll sing my background parts from when I was like 19 at the time. You know, if I still remember. Well, you know that early stuff, that stuff you learn when you're in your teens and 20s. That that stuff really stays with you for the rest totally. of your life, whether you like it or not. You yeah. know, there's there's a programming point right there for humans that's that's amazing really it was, it was my first gig and the, the other <laughs> funny thing is david byrne who for the younger people that might not know has the scariest eyes when he's not tripping <laughs> like <Yes>. that <laughs> those albums were my tripping albums yeah. remain in light oh my all, gosh, the, yes. all, the, all the talking heads that oh. that's what we used to trip to when i was 17 <laughs> it's like you went to you went to Keezy's house and he's balled up with like, freaking out. That's the funny man. I think it's incredible how you're you're talking about like Corey Hart and all of that and how the like we were talking about. You went to that Talking Heads show and how it was so different mm-hmm. than a dead show, and how you saw how music could be totally something different than we had, when when John Mayer came on the podcast. O'Teal said something and very like that blew John's mind about how like pop is the counterculture to the counterculture. Do you know, like, so for you growing up in the, the dead scene where everything is free flowing and, you know, endless. And then you go to a show that's like, Mm -hmm. this is the album. This is the tracks in order and it's clean and short. And (laughs) the whole concert's the length of a grateful dead set break. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's interesting how like the other side of the coin, you know, like it's wild that to, experience it from that side you know it's true i felt like uh you know there was no way for me to connect really with the scene that i grew up in because that's the scene that you grow up in you know it's it's not the it's not the place for you to i don't know why that is but you tend to want to be the opposite of that for a period of time in your life as you figure yourself out and pop music well it just caught me you know it got in my insides you know with the grateful dead i'd heard that music my whole life and um and yeah it had emotional effects on me but it's not the same as being just someone who loves that music as it is so whereas with pop music i could just be a a leaf on the wind of the music so to speak you know where you're just totally dancing and and enjoying and being part of the whole it is so catchy. I love it. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of hooks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We'll be right back after this. What's up, everyone? I'm Mike. And I'm O'Teal. And these are our Sunset Lake CBD gummies that are almost gone. Sunset Lake CBD is a farmer-owned business that ships CBD products directly from their farm to your door. 
For years, Sunset Lake was a Vermont dairy farm producing milk for Ben and Jerry's ice cream. In 2018, they diversified and started growing hemp for CBD. And with a product for everyone, they offer pre-rolls, hemp cigars, and hemp flowers, as well as tinctures, gummies, and CBD-crafted coffee to help with stress, aches, and pains. Sunset Lake CBD saves you money by shipping high-quality CBD products directly from their farm to your door. Want to know what I've been using a lot of, Oteal? This salve with the arnica uh, on, yeah. my, on my old bones. You get back from a show and you got tore ankle, rub a little bit of this on there. You're ready to dance the next day. And you know, S- Sunset Lake uh, comes a time listeners can visit sunsetlakecbd.com and use promo code TIME for 20% off of their purchase. That's sunsetlakecbd.com, promo code TIME. And tell them we sent you. Thanks for listening. I'm guessing you always have had to have some time where you like break away from the Grateful Dead scene. Or did you learn that at a certain age? Like, hey, you need to take you need to completely cut out of this thing to balance out. Mm. No, I was not that together. Uh, It was, you know, there was always so much drama. It was just like a crazy amount of drama. And my dad would be sick and like, you know, and strung out. And the Grateful Dead was just kind of this behemoth and the politics. So, I mean, I would always seek like quiet time to myself. Just I think instinctively, you know, I just I would just always feel like like if I hear one more person saying something to me about something that I can't control then I'm going to lose my mind. You know, it became like the world was full of broken glass, you know, and just Mm. everything was that way. So I would, you know, stay up all night, drive my car, you know, when I was like 18, like all night long, just nowhere, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, just like listening to music and woo, you know, and doing all the things that I'm not supposed to be doing, which is essentially, you know, listening to music and driving my car in the middle of the night. (laughs) And then when I was in my, uh, you know, in, when I was about 20, uh, I was the everybody was like, well, you get to you know, college, you got to do stuff. You've got to like, you know, march forward. And I just couldn't bear the idea of any of that. And so I decided to run away to Alaska. And I, I was up there for like two years in my in my like age 20 as kind of a testing ground to see what kind of person I really was. So like by that. So when I was oh. 20, I realized I really needed a break. And to get away from it all. And um, and it's just, you know, the organization and, and the culturalness of Grateful Dead, it was, it's an encompassing thing. And I just had a hard time understanding my place in it. And yeah. by then I'd been, you know, had a lot of terrible experiences with people and, and trusting people and, and having them just be into Jerry and you know, and I was just a pathway because I was a real nice kid, like I, one of those yeah. foolishly naive, even though I was raised in the middle of this insane hustle. And I was still just, you know, wide eyed and what you want to be friends? Come on backstage, you know, and we'll hang out <laughs> and, it'll, and it would just turn out really badly, <laughs> you yeah. know. So, yeah, you know, you you have an instinctive reaction when you're a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Trust is hard. Yeah. So Alaska, what in Alaska, how was that? Like, was it a, was it a relief? It was great. (laughs) <laughs> she sounds great. It was a, it was a, ter- <laughs> it was great. It was a terrifying adventure. You know, I told everybody I was going to do it and then finally the day, day came for me to do it. And I'm like getting in my car and driving away going, what the fuck am I doing? This is insane. I don't know anybody in Alaska. I have no plan. I have no money. Wow. And, uh, but I, 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 I just kind of, embarrassed myself into it like there's no way I could not do it after having talked about it for like a year and so I just did and I went up there and uh ended up of course meeting people and making friends and um kind of like trying out different ways of interacting with people and it was fun up until the point when they found people started finding out who my family was after about like a few months, it didn't take long actually. 
And, uh, and after that, eh, it started getting more awkward and weird. And I realized that there was pretty much nowhere to hide. <laughs> you know, there's, there was no way for me to just be a person in the world. And, uh, mm-hmm. that that was always going to be part of my, of, of how people see me, even when I tried not to talk about it or tell anyone, it just, it has a tendency to, to get out and to get, to get heard, even if I don't have, don't use my regular name. So it's just, it's, it was kind of one of those learning experiences where I'm like, okay, this is a thing I can't get rid of. Even up here in Alaska, you know, there's nowhere I can go. So I, I need, to, I need to make a peace with it somehow. Not that that happened right away, but you know, yeah. I've always kind of stuck with the hermit thing. You just kind of away out in the woods, yeah. um, kind of keeping to myself. Like I'm a lot more happier uh, in a way. I'm a lot happier when I'm not talking to anybody for long periods of time. You know, I just kind of like, it's just me and my brain and we're comfortable together. And which is weird. Most people aren't. <laughs> It's true. You know? Yeah. That's what most of our podcast is about. Alaska was great. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. No, and go it ahead. Seemed, it seems like Alaska, like a lot of people's Alaska was the Grateful Dead, which is so interesting from a, another yes. side of it, right? Like people's escape <laughs> yeah. to the Grateful Dead from their world. It was just a traveling, partying Alaska. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and it's impossible totally. to not like, you know. It, how are you gonna keep it a secret? Which I know because I was like, I, I was gonna ask you, like, so did you make a big secret who you were? You know, but your life is your life. So if you talk about your life, I mean, I'm gonna talk about stuff that happened in my life, and it just it doesn't happen to be any thing that anybody knows about you know it's just like you really can't but uh, wherever you go there you are kind of thing yeah but I'm glad you made it to being happy in your brain because that's a huge theme of our podcast is mental health and how do you most of us are not like Mike and I aren't comfortable with our brains I'm way more than I used to be this podcast has helped me get there right. cl- halfway yeah. there, or at least acknowledge it's uh, like acknowledging that we need an Alaska that even if it's for 20 minutes a day, we can visit in our heads. You know what I mean? And like one time I talked to Weir b- about Keezy and he mentioned like he was, everyone was so jealous that he had the farm in Oregon to kind of retreat to, like he didn't have to always be in the limelight. Right. He didn't always have, he could pop in and out when he wanted. And, and you know, that, it seems like, you know, you, you brought up something about trust or like trust is hard when you lose it early, you know, and, and to like come back, like, I'm sure you met people in Alaska and you're like, Oh, these are my friends. I can open up to them. And then you go, Hey, yeah, by the way, like, you know, I am who I am or whatever. And then the telephone game starts and you're like, well, here I am at another place where I can't really be me. Right. That's hard. Yeah. And I, you also, it's, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a little process. And then there's like a, a, there, the anxiety comes when you make friends and you're really clicking with them and you're, and there's like this life, you know, that's sitting right there, but you know, in your heart that eventually you've got to tell these people, you know, who you are, who your family is, that eventually you're going to tell them. And the second that you do, everything changes. And, and <sighs> even if they don't change the way they look at you changes. And, and, uh, but if you, if you tell them immediately, you know, or they know who you are ahead of time, then they have preconceptions about what kind of person you're going to be. And they're really weirded out when you're not that person. And that's really awkward. So it puts all this pressure on, um, on your relationships. And sometimes I, I can handle it. And sometimes I just don't even want to try, you know, or I'm just like, I'm just, yeah. oh my gosh, I've just met somebody amazing. And I'm, I'm really enjoying this conversation. And yes, I do want to go and have dinner with somebody or go to their party, but I've had so many different reactions. I've had people get mad at me if I haven't told them. I've had people <laughs> like where I have to work like for a year to get them to stop putting me in a box of what kind of person I ought to be. So Oh, there man. are definitely times where I'm just like, I'm just done. I don't want to make, I don't want to meet anybody. I don't want to have to watch the, that knowledge affect how they look at me. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's like having, being a secret superhero. It's like a, 
It's like you have a secret identity. And but which one's the secret? Is Annabelle the secret identity or is Jerry's daughter the secret identity? You know, it's they're wow. both secret identities to each other. It's very wow. complicated. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you ended up so comfortable it it, with your own brain it's it's like a I mean uh, maybe miracle. that maybe that 200 hits at 2 years old and a <laughs> You know, maybe that <laughs> that prepared your brain. Maybe that was somehow As- Asley being like, so. "You're gonna need this in 40 years." So <laughs> you're gonna need this, right? Don't you love I, those? I really uh, put a lot of it to my, uh, you know, go, I put a lot of it to my dad, as he was so, uh, you know, he he was just, he was my best buddy, you know, when I was a kid. Him and I were really close, and so luckily I had that that reason alone made all the other stuff kind of worth it. You know, where it's just like, if this is the price to have, you know, me and my dad's special relationship and how much fun we had together and how, how funny we, we got to be together, you know, then that's, that's, a, it's too bad, but here's, here's how it is. You know, I've got to put up with the grateful dead. I've got to deal with all these things. Cause I want to hang out with my dad. Cause when I see him, I feel good. You know <laughs> I mean? And, we, and yeah. we, we love hanging out together. So, I mean, and that's like a justification ritual that I go through all the time. <laughs> it, it just, yeah. I have to re I have to reconvince myself, you know, that that's, that's the, that's good enough reason to not get annoyed or despairing of, of reality, you know, and the social world is very complex and I'm, I'm not, unhappy to be kind of to the side and to be yeah. happy with my own company you know it's it doesn't yeah. it doesn't bother me <laughs> you know because it's hard out there i don't know how people do it honestly no the, the being famous thing <laughs> oh my god you can have that shit like I, i've 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 just worked with you know so many people that are that have been famous since they were young and, and it really is uh I, I would almost say it's like 60, 40 curse blessing, you know, because you the, all the stuff that comes with it, who's prepared to deal with that? Like, you know, even if it's right. even me, it's hard to deal with it. And it's not like focused on me. It's like way more focused on Bob or Mayor or, you know, Billy and Mickey and Phil. And, but still, there's just so much. Stuff and there's no class. Nobody teaches you how to deal with it. Most of the people that do have to deal with it, they don't know how to deal with it. Very, they're lucky to have survived it. Right. You know, it's it's uh, and, and I the one thing I do see is that a lot of people that do it well are kind of like you, your mom, uh, like Keezy was, where you have that severe yin yang. Like I'm gonna be mm-hmm. in the woods and then I'm gonna be in the behemoth you know right that's a performance it you know for some people are natural showmen you know keezy my mom uh you know various people in the world are just they love being the center of attention they love being ringmasters in their way but they also you get tired and they want to go backstage so to speak you know and have that distance yeah. And I've never been a very good at the ringmaster thing, mostly because I smile too much and I get too excited and I start laughing and it's over. You know, I, can't, <laughs> I can't keep it together to be a ringmaster at all. So uh, it's easier for me to be an encourager from the sidelines, you know. And uh, my mom is is a force of nature like Keezy and all those pranksters yeah. were. They, were. they were like dominant creatures of social uh, control. They, they wanted that orchestra around them and and the, if you were a tough nut to crack well they that they double down and try to crack you open and mm. i just found that all to be that was way too much more than i ever wanted to deal with because <laughs> then you have to deal with that person forever you know i mean you can't just crack someone's psyche open and then walk away you know they're gonna be needing you forever it's a brainwash in a way in a positive way <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you have like did you did you um you know i always like with the other kids like uh in with the band and also with your sisters and stuff like did you guys kind of find solace in each other with those things like dealing with like the lack of tr- like the stranger the outsiders that were like you know it's hard to trust right. someone that's not backstage sometimes. 
Yeah, I mean, we do now more, but when we were kids, uh, we kind of were, our age differences were just enough to make it awkward. So it's like four years in between all of us girls. And um, we got split up a bunch of times where Sunshine would come and live in Oregon and Trixie and I would get shipped off to the East Coast to be in weird communes. And I mean, like I said, my childhood is really colorful, so it's it sometimes doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like with and the other kids growing up backstage, I mean, you, you know, a lot of them had their own issues going on. So it, it's it's hard to say. We we kind of did. I mean, we're there's an extended family, but none of us ever became like intimate buddies. You know, there was um, there's a lot of don't ask, don't tell, don't ask questions kind of thing back in those days. Particularly, the paranoia levels were were very high and the last thing you want to do is ask your dad about that bunch of white powder or whatever <laughs> they'd, they'd yell at you <laughs> and there's a lot of shady stuff going on you know so you you learn the paranoia of a smuggler as a young kid if that makes sense where you're <laughs> yeah. kind of suspicious of everybody <laughs> understood i mean and now of course as adults you know when we see each other we we share our memories and we try to fill each other's uh, the gaps in our memories and um you know but we're still none of us are all that super close there's like a distance there regardless and but a respect you know like, i love all the kids that i grew up with i love my sisters but our our individual experiences were terribly unique to to us you know so it was it's very hard to quantify or even define that relationship it's like a battlefield relationship almost you know where you you've been through so much that you kind of like hey it's you we're excited to see you <laughs> you know all the memories are kind of devastating and semi-traumatic so uh how's your day you know <laughs> it's, it's it's very difficult <laughs> but you know what are you gonna do that's family Family, yeah. exactly. You don't choose it, right? It's when family. I, it's the same for everybody. Yeah. It's, I was just uh, when we had rehearsal. Uh, Raya was there, and uh, and I remember having this. Uh, uh, a lot of our conversations, you know, when we talk, I'm just like, wow, her childhood was so different. You think about the famous people, but you don't think about all the other people attached to it, and how that's all she knew. Right. That's all you knew. But so it's like, really, what is normal? But right. at the same time, from from coming from a, re a more normal, quote unquote, it seems like, wow, if that was your normal, of course, you would be into like pop or. But then also like right. the smuggler, the smugglers paranoia to have that as a kid, like a lot of people just can't relate to that. It took me a really long time to like. I, I used to be like, hey, everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time. And it's like, no, man, you have to give these guys a pass. That some people, their reality is just different. And that's what it was. Like, right. if that's what it was when you were really young. Right. And there's nothing to compare. And nobody can walk you through that. Like, you can't go, oh, hey, Michael Jackson, how do you deal with... Because you're already in the... You've already got the PTSD and the... <laughs> you know, it's just like... Yeah. I really, I'm, I'm amazed you you turned out so well adjusted, <laughs> Annabelle. I I really do want to thank you because, you know, as I'm inter as as we're I don't even say interviewing, but as we're talking to you, yeah. you know, you realize, wow, I think she probably likes Lisa. How they like bring up all this old shit. <laughs> I'd rather just be alone. No, it's normal. I, <laughs> no, no, because no, if I'm too much alone, then of course I go insane like everybody else. I'm yeah. the crazy monkey in a cage rocking, holding the teddy bear, you know, <laughs> and trying to connect somehow to inanimate objects. And that's well, not healthy. So, you know, what, you know, I would, we're love, I would love to do this more, you know. Well, we, we would love to. I mean, this is just the there's so much interesting yeah. stuff that I would love to. What, and you know, you know what else? You know what we're finding too, which is really neat, is that we have these conversations, right? And and then we're getting messages from listeners that are like, "This is helping us so much," 
And that's, what's cool. It's not like, yeah, yeah. you're not, we didn't go, Hey, before we recorded, we didn't go like, Hey, we're going to ask you a bunch of tough shit. Like it just goes there. Right. And it's neat that we always talk about people that yeah. are tuned, tuned to that frequency that like people need to hear this stuff. Cause it's like, we all had our Alaska and we all had our, you know, smugglers paranoia in our own way, you know, not to the magnitude, right. of, you know, but <laughs> We're all dealing with weird shit. <laughs> yeah. No, being a human is one of the most difficult things I think that we have to offer on this planet is like the experience of being a human being in our various societies, our various countries and our various realities. And it's so wildly different for every single person. I mean, we all like to think that, oh, we're all the same, which like you were saying, which we are in that we need air, we need food and stuff like that. You know, we have to go to the bathroom, but like everything else is just really quite different. And um, the more we talk to each other, the more we can kind of like identify with each other and break out of that, the habit that we all have of seeing the world through just our own vision, you yeah. know, through our own lenses of experience. And um, you know, the Grateful Dead growing up in there, there was definitely a cone of silence. You know, it was like the tie-dyed, the thin tie-dyed line, like the red <laughs> line or the blue line. You know, <laughs> you just did not cross it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You did not, you just didn't <laughs> on fear of, you know, I don't know, the apocalypse, I guess, you know? And so as a kid being in there, you, you tend to take that to an extreme, which isn't necessarily the healthiest route because... I want to connect to people and I want to, I, I'm enchanted by human nature. I, I absolutely adore humans. I think that we're the weirdest, you know, funniest and strangest and, you know, most odd thing that's probably been invented in a long time, you know, so it's, it's what we have. And if you're not fascinated by other people, then it's a lot lonelier of an existence, you know, even from a distance. Um, I try to kind of like, that's what I like connecting. I like connecting with people. It's it's an important thing is being able to pierce the veil and say, you know, there you are. You're in there. You know, you're in there. I can see you. Come on out. It's all right. <laughs> you know, we can rap for a while and then go back to our, our you know, our head spaces. Pierce it's the funny veil. You bring I like that, that, up. that a lot. I, I just recently, and when I say recently, I mean like in the last 48 hours, Somehow got into professional wrestling finally. <laughs> and, uh, oh it's, my gosh. So... It's about time, O'Teal. Oh, man. <laughs> Where you we had been? A, we had a talk at midnight <laughs> last night, and he's like, dude. You got to see this. I'm watching and, old wrestling. And, and Mike knows all about it. Like, I've known Mike. I feel like we've gotten so close. He's throwing out all these names, my sister. But the reason I brought it up oh, yeah. is the, the, the kayfabe part. Because when you said there's a lot of, like, you know, don't say anything, the thin tie-dye line. It's like we have this. It's one of the most fascinating things about humans of this we all agree to this kayfabe and we agree that we're not going to break it, but we all know right. it's not real. Right. And so how yes. do we negotiate sanity? Like what is real sanity if that's what we're doing? And it's, and that, and what really is sanity is like what you're saying, that connection, the authentic connection, you know? So we do all want yeah. that. And that's what I, I, I'm talking myself into making me, uh, letting myself not feel so guilty about having you on talking about this really <laughs> personal shit. You know? <laughs> Cause right. it's like, which is, the, it's, you know, good connection. Which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But it's authentic. I mean, I, I, I was born this way, you know, it's like even yeah. before I came out, people were whispering yeah. to my mom's belly about the cosmic greatness that they in store for me, you know, and it's just one of those things where you're like, okay, well, you know, kind of defeated at birth, you know, in that way. And it took me a lot of years to just relax and, and not, not take it personally, like as if I was failing all the time, you know, cause yeah. I'm not, I'm not failing all the time. It may feel like it. And there may be moments when I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm 51 and I still haven't won a Pulitzer and, uh, or, or had a stage play or, you know, or 
or change the world in some esoteric fashion that no one could ever understand, you know, like, like my parents, <laughs> you know, that's an impossible bar. So I just have to settle for like an occasional ice cream cone and like an appreciation <laughs> of the flowers and the natural world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you the, know that's the advice that I think we've gotten on this podcast, man. That yeah. is the best. We I, we were having ice cream <laughs> with my family the other day, and you know, I just thought this is it. This is, but I knew it. I was like, this is what I love the most. Yeah. All four of us getting yes. ice cream together, and I just was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know. So uh, as long as we land, yeah, there, those are the moments. Yeah, totally. You're, you're so right. And yeah, like you no, said, that's so right on. It's perfect. And, and like you had said earlier, like your 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 dad was your best friend, and mm. when your best friend is this kind of reluctant, shy hero to the mass, like you're gonna pick yeah. up, you're gonna pick up on that, and that's gonna be, you know, like no wonder you like your time alone. You know, of course. You remember a yeah. courtship of Eddie's yeah. father. You guys are a little older. Oh, yeah. Remember that show? Uh, no, People I remember. Let I me remember. tell you about yeah. my best friend. <laughs> I think of that song. To Harry Nilsson, right? <laughs> Whenever I'm with Nigel, I think about that. He holds beach. my hand. Yeah. <laughs> I sing that to my That's dog so all sweet. the time. That's so sweet. The scene was... You know, they're walking on the beach, you know, it's like the beautiful, you know, beautiful moment of the father and the son. And yeah, I I yearned over those things, too, for sure. Because <laughs> that's an unreal expectation. But it reflects those moments. It, it gives you, yeah. you know, definition. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't I don't have kids myself. So I, I imagine that's just got to be a whole other level of human experience that I can't can't comprehend but i can appreciate and i and i and admire and respect you know that that you can give of yourself so freely to a child you know that i was always worried that i was probably a little selfish <laughs> you know to well to you be find out parent. you find but, out that you are i mean wow boy does it do it but <laughs> it gives you so much too because just to be able to see things through their eyes helps you recover yeah. it like I can't remember a lot of my childhood, but when watching it through their eyes, I'm like, oh yeah. So you know, it's it's all good, and you know, you could do that with any friends' yeah. kids. You know, like it's it's all good. But well, we oh, yeah. love you. I've got little adopted kids. I love you too. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you so much. Let's do this again sometime. I would Please. love to talk more. Oh my God! It would yeah. be an honor. Yeah, this is really awesome. And it, for for those who are listening, where can can people find your uh, your art? And where can everybody see everything? They, there's nowhere. There's nothing. There's like I I used to do social media and Instagram, and I still do occasionally. But I kind of got a little burned out, so I haven't really done much there. And uh, and like in the scheme of the world, I've just finished going through menopause and I just honestly did not feel like doing anything <laughs> gotcha. for like the last year and a half. Cool. So <laughs> I love that. It's nice. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I'd love to think that someday I could find like a really cool art manager who would just take all the work and do stuff with it for me. Uh, but in general, I find it really difficult to sell art mostly because anyone that buys from me wants an experience Nah. You know, they're like, they may love the art, but what they really love is for me to hang out with them and, and make like a, you know, make a connection that way. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, just, just buy the fucking art, will you? <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> no, I'm sure it, that's going to come so, because you really yeah. do have your own voice art wise and I, you Thank could you. Uh, yeah. sell all that stuff, man, for sure. Yeah. But I love I love doing it. I really would love to spread it out in the world. And I do a lot of stuff for charity. I, I donate a lot of stuff. I've got I actually just did an NFT for the first time, oh, cool. which was done by my friend Jason McHugh. Yeah, hmm. down in, and it was for the last prisoner project for an auction, uh, which is the last prisoner project which does, you know, get people out of jail for weed charges, yeah. you know. And so a buddy of mine is doing do, or did an auction for that and I was happy to to contribute a piece that I did special for that. And that was awesome. And like, so very sporadic appearances of my art in the world. Neat. And All maybe right. someday I'll find a really groovy art person that will just deal with it. <laughs> well, you know, oh, I have my first universe. kid at 50. And so 
And truly, I can truly right? say my life began at 50. So you're you're fine. You have a whole great art career ahead of you right now. It's just getting started, <laughs> especially because you spoke it into the universe right here yes. on Comes yes. Time. Yes, yep. totally. And you I know did. what's funny? I, I, it's manifested. <laughs> I was just on the phone right before talking to you guys with Mary Bailey from Last Prisoner Project. And they asked me to be uh, oh. on the advisory board. So it's so funny that we're ending up your interview with you talking about that. It's just perfect. That's I'm really hilarious. excited to get involved with that. <laughs> the right frequency. It's a great project. Just, yeah, we had them on. Yeah, they're they're no, that's, amazing. Yeah. That's what magic is, is when everything collides like that and something interesting is born from it. So it's it, it makes me feel better. I always find that very reassuring when there's a like cosmic coincidence. It's like, ah, we're on the right track somehow. Yes, me totally. too. That's a, my favorite thing is that Quincy <laughs> Jones quote where he says, uh, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> or synchronicity, oh, you know. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's a good esoteric comment. That's solid. <laughs> well, Annabelle, if I if I catch you at a show, okay. I promise to uh, ask for a hug first before going in for uh, <laughs> one. Okay, I promise. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I, I'll have a consent form ready for you. <laughs> you got it. Deal. <laughs> we love you, Mama. Thank you so oh, much. Thank, thank you. I love you, too. Thanks so much, gentlemen. You guys are a real pleasure to talk to, and, and I love you both. And, thank uh, you so much. Love thank everybody you. that's listening to you guys. Take it easy out there. You, too. Bye-bye, Ma. We'll see you soon. 